What's up my friends? Today, we're gonna go over my racing simulator. All right, so I previously made a video about the Thrustmaster TMX racing wheel. Uh, I've owned that wheel for about a year and a half now and driving with it connected to my desk was just not enough. And so I decided to build myself a full racing simulator setup. And we're gonna go through each and every part, how it connects, and I'll show you a few cool games you can play. Let's go. All right, so the first and most important piece of this whole thing is probably the base unit. Uh, and so I went with the Next Level Racing GT Track cockpit setup. It has a fully adjustable base for the pedals. It has a fully adjustable uh, unit for the wheel to clip onto so that you can change the angle. The, the base itself, the chair itself has a slider to move forward and backward just like a real car. It has a lever on the side to be able to recline the seat or bring it up into full racing position. Uh, and it is very sturdy. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, move the camera off the tripod here. Let's take a look at it a little bit and I'll show you a couple of the cool things about it. All right, so the seat itself is super rigid. It's made of that PU polyurethane leather. So if you are worried about official leather, worry not, this is vegan friendly. Uh, it is a super comfortable chair. And like I mentioned, there are two adjustments on it. Here in the front, there's a bar that allows you to move the chair forwards and backwards. And right here on the side, there's a lever that allows you to recline and put the chair straight up and down. And so it does come with a brace here for your shifter. And it also comes with a adjustable bracket here for your pedals and an adjustable bracket here for your wheel. And so it is super rigid. It is stiff and that's what you want it to be, right? When you are sitting down in this unit and you are making a turn and you are feeling it, you don't want give in the wheel. You don't want movement in your chair. You don't want your pedals sliding out from underneath you. And so the base unit, I feel very confident about that I made the right decision and invested the bigger money uh, into the right unit. The other cool thing about this, this uh, simulator seat is that it does have all of the attachments. It comes with all the attachments so you can connect it to the motion base. So if you wanna really you know, invest. It's like three grand for the motion base. Um, this chair gives you the ability to go ahead and do that. And so I went ahead with this. So I have the option one day, if I want to get the motion base, I can do that. I'm ready to do that. Um, and so let's go ahead and check out a couple other of the components. Oh, actually real quick before we do that. One more thing I wanted to show you before we move on to some of the components is, uh, there's this black box here underneath the unit. This is actually some wood. It's some two by fours and some plywood. Uh, my wife is a total handyman and, and actually put this together and painted it for me. But this is a four inch riser that I needed to build because it's actually very important that your simulator steering wheel sits at a certain point. You kind of want your steering wheel uh, to be at almost center of the TV. And, uh, and so because my desk was 30 inches tall and because this unit is only 20 inches tall, I needed a four inch lift to make the difference. And so we built this unit to give it some extra height so that when we're sitting in front of the TV, we have the right uh, perspective. We're getting the right field of view. If not, it wouldn't feel like you're driving it. It could feel off, it could feel wrong. And so when you're doing this, you wanna make sure and have everything as close to real and precise as possible. So make sure that your steering wheel sits almost to the middle of your screen in height. Okay, so this is the Thrustmaster TMX wheel. I've done a whole video on this, so I'm not gonna talk a whole lot about it today. I'll go ahead and link in the description, the video specifically about this wheel and my thoughts on it when I got it. Um, but today we're just gonna talk about how some of the components hook into it and the way that you wanna configure it if you're playing Xbox or PC and uh, a couple of the cooler things about some of the accessories. So let's go ahead and move on. All right, so one of the first accessories that I got was the Thrustmaster TH8A shifter. 
Uh, it is actually solid metal. It has a magnetic contactless technology so that it's not supposed to degrade over time. There's no gears or mechanical parts in there so that when you're shifting over time, it breaks down. It's said to not do that. It's supposed to have an unlimited lifetime. Um, also, I decided on this first before the sequential shifter with the handbrake integrated because I just, when I think of a simulator, for some reason, I don't think of like an F1 car. I think of like an old Corvette or driving some muscle car. And, and so I thought of the H shifter uh, as my first accessory. And so cool thing about this, it has two connection points. It has the connector that can connect into the hub unit. Um, or it has a direct USB so that it can connect right into the PC. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later, but it also, uh, you can actually take off the shifter heads here and, and buy different shifter heads. So in a car, this is actually a threaded pattern that is factory standard where you can buy different shifter heads for your shifter, which is kind of a neat little added thing. I, I've thought about buying a couple just for fun to change it up. Um, but it's it's fantastic. I've had a great time with this shifter unit. Uh, it's one of the less expensive accessories in the whole setup. And I think it adds a whole layer of uh, difficulty and excitement to the experience. So these are the Thrustmaster TLCM pedal set. Top of the line, best of the best. These things are one of the biggest investments in the kit, actually, if you think about a single piece. Uh, they have load cell adjustable sensors, which means this thing has 220 pounds of braking pressure. Like, I can't get it further than that, right? Like, ugh, it's, it's intense and it's pressure sensitive. Like when you're racing, this thing will break a little if you break a little, or if you mash on it, it'll break a lot. It's fantastic. What's really neat about it is it's fully adjustable. Each pedal can be adjusted at height and also how difficult they are to press down. The brake especially has some unique adjustments where there's six different spring units that can be changed out to change how resistant the brake is. Also, uh, if you decided that you wanted them to be set back further, you could actually individually set all of them at a different angle. It's an amazing, amazing pedal set and uh, it actually connects into the base unit itself. It has a uh, like a Cat5 end that connects right here into the base. The base supports two, two add-ons. Um, and so they, uh, if, if you get a third one is when you're gonna need the hub unit. And actually we'll talk about that next. But the brakes here, they're fully mounted. They're, the GT track unit came fully ready with pre-drilled holes set up for this pedal unit. Also, we set the adjustment on the track unit just a little higher than normal because I wanted my pedals to be almost straight, like I'm pressing them right against a wall, just like a race car. And, uh, and so that's that for the pedals. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about the hub unit. Okay, so this is the Thrustmaster hub unit. Uh, it has four ports here where you can connect multiple devices to it and then connect this into your PC or your Xbox. Uh, that's one thing to know about this setup. This setup is fully Xbox and PC. It is not PlayStation of any kind. They have other wheels and uh, these accessories will work with PlayStation, but this wheel will not. Uh, and so that's just one thing to know. And so uh, the hub unit allows you to connect four units into it. Now, what you're gonna notice is I'm not using it right now. That's why it's in my hand. That's why it's not hooked up because I have the max amount of accessories that can work with just the wheel. The shifter itself plugs right into the wheel. The pedals themselves plug right into the wheel and the wheel plugs into the Xbox or the PC. Now, that is how it works for Xbox, okay? You saw everything plugged in right there at the base of the wheel. If you want to use this on PC, you actually have to change one thing up. And I wanna give you this warning because it took me a little while to figure out like, why isn't my crap working? To use this on PC, the pedals can connect to the wheel and the wheel goes USB to the PC. But the shifter has to actually go on its own USB to the PC as well unless you're using the hub. 
If you change over to the hub, you can plug everything into the hub and the hub to the PC and it will work fully. If you're not using the hub, go ahead and give everything a direct USB connection and, and it's gonna work a lot better for you that way. Cool, just wanted to get that warning out of the way. Now that we've gotten that out of the way and you've seen all the accessories that come together. Oh, I forgot one thing, the screen. Let's talk about that and then we're gonna get into some racing. All right, so for the screen, I went with an LG 50 inch nano cell OLED TV. It was actually only about 500 bucks and so about the same price as the pedals, honestly. Uh, for a big screen TV with most of the things you want, I thought it was a good value ratio because my racing unit is hooked up to an Xbox Series S most of the time, which does 2140p and 60 frames a second. And so you can see here, the TV does full 40 frames at 60 hertz, which is going to give you your 60 frames a second. It supports HDR10 and it gives us a bunch of different variable ranges for if different games do 30 frames or 24, we can support all those things up to 60. And I thought, you know, for 500 bucks, do I really need 120 hertz? Do I really need to buy another Series X to hook my racing sim up to? Probably not. I really enjoy the Series S, it powers it well, and I feel like for the value, for bang for the buck, the screen gives us mostly everything we need. The only thing you can see here it's missing is 120 hertz and Dolby Vision, and you're gonna pay an extra thousand dollars to get those two things in your TV. So I highly recommend it. It's been a fantastic unit for me. The clarity is good, the brightness is good, the low light, the black levels. I feel really good about it for my choice for my simulator. Okay, so now I've showed you all the pieces that it takes to put together a race seat just like this. And so the bigger question though is, why do we spend the money to build a race seat like this? Let me show you. And that, my friends, is why you build yourself a racing simulator. So there's a couple things I wanna point out real quick before I let you go. Number one, a quick tip, get yourself some racing shoes. Uh, these are actually a set of water shoes that I picked up, but what I liked is they kinda had a really grippy bottom because I'll tell you what, those pedals will hurt your feet if you're just wearing socks. It feels unnatural. So get yourself a pair of inside shoes that just stay with your station. These were like 12 bucks, okay? And the final thing, the question I know that a few of you are gonna ask is, what's next? What am I gonna upgrade? How am I gonna make this better and take it even further? Well, I have two more upgrades in mind. One, I'm going to get the TSSH sequential shifter handbrake. So that way I can add an emergency brake to the setup. And the final thing, since my wheel is the original TMX wheel, it's a year and a half old, it has served me well. My next upgrade is going to be the new Thrustmaster wheel either direct drive or belt driven. I'm gonna drop some good cash on whatever their latest and greatest is. And obviously, cause I'm invested in that ecosystem and I will get that. Those are the two things that I think will round out the sim before I really start thinking about motion or bigger screens or multiple screens. 
and who knows, maybe I'll even connect some VR. Anyways, that's it for me, my friends. If you want the parts list on how to build this simulator for yourself, go ahead and check the description. If you have questions, go ahead and leave me one. Otherwise, please go ahead and smash that like button. Get subscribed so that you don't miss another video. Much love from me, my friends. I'll see you in the next one.